Yes, Lord, what a faithful God you are. What a wonderful God you are. Lord, you are too faithful. You are too good to us, Jehovah. Thank you because of your love. Thank you because of your kindness, Lord. Thank you because of your mercies that are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, Lord. We approach your throne of grace this morning with a lot of confidence that you are our Father, a God who hears us when we call, when we cry out to you. You respond, oh Father, when we knock, the door is opened. When we seek you, we find you, dear Father. When we wait on you, we experience you. We thank you this morning for an opportunity, Lord, that you have given us to pray, my Father, to be together online, to worship you, my Father, and even to be encouraged by you. And so Oh Lord, may your presence continue to be with us this morning, even as we pray, Lord Almighty, looking at Scripture, dear Father, and praying the Scripture back to you, asking that you would help us to be as the Word says, dear Father. To you be the glory, the honor, and the majesty. In Jesus' name we pray and we believe. Amen and amen. So good to have each one of you join us for our prayer devotion. It's always a pleasure. This is a new week and we are trusting God to help us, to move with us, to encourage us and to empower us because great are the things he has in store for us. Even this week, as we continue to engage in prayer and waiting on him and just taking the prayer gear on another level. And so this week, we are going to focus on Isaiah 61. The prayers we are going to pray for this week, it's Isaiah 61, just looking at a verse after a verse and asking the Lord to help us to be what the scripture says. And so today we are going to look at verse 1, Isaiah 61 verse 1, and I'm going to read from the English Standard Version. This is what it says. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. Now, this scripture, interestingly, the Lord Jesus used it in the book of Luke chapter number four. If you read from verse 16 downwards, the Lord Jesus, when he was called upon to read um, according to the custom of the Jews then, he opened, he was given the scroll and coincidentally it was the scroll of Isaiah and coincidentally it was that portion that says the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And Jesus continued and said, this scripture has been fulfilled in your day. Meaning that the person that the, the prophet is talking about here is Jesus Christ because he's called the anointed one, the Messiah, the one who is to come and set people free. And so if Jesus, the son of God and God the son needed the spirit of God for him to be able to accomplish and fulfill the purpose and the ministry to which he was coming to do. If he needed the Holy Spirit, how much more you and I, how much more we who are called the children of God or other Christians, believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. We need the Holy Spirit more and more. And so Jesus says, the Spirit of God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. So you can see that the anointing of God upon Jesus was by the Holy Spirit. And even us, we need the anointing of the Holy Spirit to fulfill what Jesus came to do. He came to set people free. As we preach the gospel, as we proclaim the gospel, people will be set free because sin makes, breaks the hearts of people. Sin binds people. Sin causes people to be imprisoned and to be bound and not to progress and not to become what God wants them to become. And so by the Spirit of God as children of God, if we have the Spirit of God, then we are able to bring the good news to the poor. We are able to bind up the brokenhearted and proclaim liberty to those who are held captive by the things of this world. And so the anointing of God upon our lives, it is not to despise and tear down one another, but to proclaim freedom, to do the work that Jesus started, which was just preaching, healing, and deliverance. And so shall we pray for ourselves that the Spirit of God will continually flow upon us, that we'll be 
filled by the Holy Spirit, that we will not allow ourselves to go by our own power, that the ministries we do, those who are in ministries, even in the teaching ministry, in the preaching ministry, you are an usher, whoever you are, when you are out there, you are representing the kingdom of God. It is only by the Holy Spirit that you are able to fulfill the purposes of God in our generation. And that's why Jesus, teaching the disciples to pray, told them to pray this prayer and say, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. So let's pray for ourselves that the Spirit of God will so move upon us, upon the church, upon believers, even during the election year, that wherever we go, the words you speak, they will go to bind up the brokenhearted, they will become good news to people who need the good news, they will, you know, um, bring freedom to the captives and open, you know, the prison doors for those who are bound. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we are so grateful this morning for an opportunity to look into your word, O oh God, and just glean out of it, my Father, and form a basis of prayer with which to come before you and ask of you, King of glory, that you may help us become according to your word, dear Father. And so we thank you for your word that is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. Your word that is like a hammer that breaks the rock into pieces, O oh my Father. Your word that is like a light unto our path and a lamp unto our feet. We thank you, Jehovah, that when we read your word, we are encouraged Oh God. And this morning we are praying the prayer that Jesus declared in Luke chapter 4 when he was given a scroll to read and he said the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me. Lord we recognize that the only way Jesus was able to be effective and powerful and productive and fruitful in his ministry on earth Lord was because of the Holy Spirit upon his life. And therefore Lord as your children as the people called by your name believe us in the Lord Jesus. Lord we pray that Lord you will fill us with your Spirit, because the anointing of God upon our lives is by the Holy Spirit. I pray that my Father, each believer will be filled with the Holy Spirit so that we'll be able to do the work that you have called us to do, the work that Jesus began, because he sent us to preach the good news to the poor. He sent us to proclaim liberty, my Father, to those who are captive, to those who are bound, my Father, to proclaim an opening of the prison doors. Therefore, Lord, I pray for each one of us that you will help us, O oh God, in our spheres of influence, my Father, people are bound by ideologies. They are bound by the wisdom of men. They are bound by opinions of men, dear Father, and they are not able to progress and become what you want them to become. I pray that Jehovah, because of your spirit that worketh upon us and worketh in us and through us, my Father, that will be effective, that will allow that anointing to so move in our lives, my Father, that will not use that anointing to tear one another down, and to despise and to look down upon each other, my Father, and to bring this unity, Almighty God, and to hamper reconciliation, my Father, and to interfere with the forgiving process, but that, God, we shall be involved to ensure that the kingdom of God is represented in the right way, dear Father, because you have called us the light and the salt of the earth. So I pray that you will help us, Jehovah, by your Spirit. Pour your Spirit upon us. Pour your Spirit upon your church, upon the children, my Father, Father, that even when they are out there, Lord, interacting with their friends, my God, they will be able to speak the oracles of God that bring healing, that bring curing, that bring a release, that bring a setting free, that bring freedom, that bring peace, that causes the good news to be proclaimed. Father, we honor you. Father, we bless you. We are open to the Holy Spirit. We want to flow in this anointing. And we are praying that my Father pour your spirit, almighty God, because we are beneficiaries of the Holy Spirit that you say, Lord Jesus, you're going to the Father. And if you go, you're going to send us a helper. And that helper is the Holy Spirit. Oh, how we pray for the Holy Spirit upon us. We thank you and we honor you, Jehovah, for hearing our prayer and pouring your spirit upon us. And today we are going to experience him even as we interact with people today. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. And Father, even before we conclude, we remember there are people who are doing exams from four. Lord, we lift them up to you this morning. And Lord, even as they engage in their papers, Lord, we rebuke the spirit of fear, anxiety, and panic, and confusion. We pray for the spirit of order. We pray that you may give them a mind to comprehend and remember all they need to remember as per the examiner's expectations in the mighty name of Jesus. We cover those who are the household of faith with the blood of Jesus, and we speak victory over 
them, declaring they shall be the heads and not the tails, they shall be at the top and not at the bottom above and not beneath by the power of your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen and amen. May the Lord bless you so much. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's continue engaging in prayer. Let's continue opening our hearts to the outpouring of the Holy Spirit because it's only by His power that we are able to fulfill and accomplish the purposes of God in our generation and in our time. Have a good day. Jesus.